you guys are in a much more professional transition right now. Shrug Collective. Um, and anytime we're in some sort of transitionary period, we have this ability to kind of reflect on the past and the show's growth and the impact it's had literally on a generation of athletes and coaches. Yeah. What does that do to you? Welcome to Barbell Shrug. I'm Mike Bletzer here with Doug Larson, Anders Varner. We're hanging out here in uh, Encinitas at Physical Culture 101. One of our favorite gyms to train at. Got cool shit here. And uh, we're going to be getting into, we're going to talk about what Barbell Shrug has done for all of us up to this point, uh, where it's at and where we're going in the future. And we've got some really cool announcements for you. Uh, and first, we're going to drop our sponsors because they're super legit. Support the show. They support us. You support them. It all goes in a circle. That's how it works. It's all good shit. Um, and we only partner with the best of companies. So first is Organifi. They uh, have awesome green drink, red drink, uh, plant-based supplements across the board. Um, I enjoy them every day. For sure. Um, I say this on every show, but red drink's my favorite. Yeah. I drink that shit every morning with breakfast. It's, it's delicious. I've gotten into the, yep. a good habit with the the green drink in the morning. Um, it just makes me feel better. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's in there, but it makes me feel good. And I trust that they're doing their research. They have their sweet proprietary blend. Um, you look at the ingredients. Everything's nice or healthy, and uh, I drink it. I feel better. I'm getting all my vitamins and minerals, and I uh, feel better about the day. Look and feel better. That's all you need. Boom. Yeah. I, I kind of treat it like my multivitamin. Like, exactly. I don't just take a multivitamin. Like, I, I want... If Who I, takes pills anymore? Well, I, I, t- I take plenty of pills, <laughs> <laughs> but just, just not multivitamins. Yeah. Like that's I, right. I, that's that, right. That, when I thought about supplements in high school, I thought, like, you take a multivitamin. That's what you do. And now, right. like, no one ever mentions a multivitamin. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like... I feel like I'm already likely, with the way that I eat, I eat pretty well. I'm getting, like, the basic vitamins but mm-hmm. but like in, in the red drink and the green drink like it has a, a variety of nutrients but it's not just like a list of like synthetic vitamins well that's the trouble with vitamins in the past is that we we thought we had figured out the game and go oh we got vitamins and minerals and like oh what about phytonutrients and mm. now it's like what about all these things it's like you know what what if we just took the plants and we powdered those and just ate the whole thing and let it be what it is yeah so i, I that's one of the things i just love about that our other sponsor being Thrive. Shrug 20. Oh, yeah, Shrug. Is it Shrug 20? No, just Shrug. Shrug. Just Shrug. Shrug. 20% off. <laughs> Hit it, Anders. Organifi.com. Use coupon code Shrugged. Save 20%. Just go to the website. Organifi.com. Yep. Shrugged. Nailed it. <laughs> Get it. Try it. Let us know what you think about the product. For Sheezy. All right. And our, <laughs> our other sponsor being Thrive Market. I'm super excited about these guys because not only are they ch- looking out for your health, but they're looking out for the health of the planet. And they're looking at what are we going to be doing in 10 years from now. Super uh, like future oriented, whereas a lot of companies are just kind of like burning things as they go. Uh, these guys are really uh, uh, trying to change how we shop and the things we're putting in our bodies, only the highest quality ingredients possible. So, um, and we we actually, with both companies, we know the people running it, and they are just they're great people yeah. doing good things in the world. Yeah, we we did a show with Drew from Organifi. We did a show with Gennar from from Thrive Market. So, if you're interested in learning more details about either of those companies, you can go watch those full shows. Uh, great companies, great missions, great people. Uh, highly recommend you go watch those episodes. Yeah. Go to thrivemarket.com/shrugged. You get some free food, you get free shipping, and a month of free membership. And uh, yeah, check yeah, you, that out. You get $60 worth of free organic right. groceries, yeah. is what right. you get specifically. Yeah, so when you're shopping from that link, you're going to get uh, some free stuff as you go. You'll also spend some money. Yeah. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. You'll love it. It shows up right <laughs> at your door. It's a lot of food that you probably are not not going to be able to get at the grocery store. I know that for a fact because I even live somewhere where the grocery stores are great, <laughs> and I still can't get everything I want. Yeah. And Thrive Market does a really good job of filling that gap. All right, guys, we have a huge announcement. Boom, boom, boom. 
Anders. Huge day. It's a big day in my life. Big day for Anders, yeah. It's graduation day. Right? It's Anders is graduating. He cap. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, as you can notice, Anders has been co-hosting with us. We've really enjoyed him. And uh, we have decided that Anders will now be hosting the show. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Sounds so weird. Yeah. A new host of Barbell Shrug. A new host of Barbell Stepping Shrug. into some big shoes. Well, yeah. sandals. Yeah. I won't floppies. be painting my toes right off the bat, but <laughs> the footwear, <laughs> I might go sandals, but um, thanks, guys. This is really cool. Um, I can't wait to dig into what this means, not just to me, but to you guys and the legacy. I think Barbell Shrug, since the day you guys launched, were literally the hub of the most elevated conversation that has really ever transpired in fitness um, from the people that you guys interview. I mean, we're interviewing real PhD scientists on the nerdiest things that exist. And we're also getting coaches that are in the, in the trenches. And um, man, I literally from 2010, when I opened my gym, um, there was never like a time where I couldn't just have a question of where I was supposed to be going in my training or in our coaching, our programming, and you guys didn't have somebody on that was already at the highest level of that subject that we could just kind of listen to that episode, start implementing some of their ideas and really get, um, you know, test some things out that you guys were having this really high level conversation on. And just as a resource for athletes, strength coaches, um, and just the goal in life is always to be in the middle of the highest level of conversation in an area that you're very interested in. And you guys are and have been for the last, what, six, seven years, mm -hmm. the facilitators of that conversation. So the fact that I get to facilitate that conversation going forward is the highest of honors. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I want to point something out to everyone listening that Anders actually has a very similar background to Doug and me. And that he competed in uh, strength sports from a very young age. You opened up a CrossFit gym in, when was this? 2010. 2010. He's been in the trenches. Uh, and then you've also gone on and you're, you're with Movement RX yep. and teamed up with Dr. Teresa Larson doing some really extraordinary things in the field. So uh, he's been through a lot of the same stuff that Doug and I have been through. So it's not, it's not like we're just dropping somebody in no. who, doesn't, who hasn't been in the shit. You've yeah. been in the like SoCal CrossFit space. It's great. It's actually weightlifting, yeah. powerlifting. You've been you've been in it deep, and uh, you went to school for this. Yeah, this is this is your world. Yeah, it's great. The uh, when you guys started, it was like uh, you guys were kind of like on the East Coast, and we had this whole SoCal scene out here. And when you guys entered into it, I remember seeing you guys at regionals, and I was like, oh, sick, like. Barbell Shrug came out west. Like yeah. we have this whole thing going on out here. Like they're gonna they're gonna dive in. So it's been an awesome two years of seeing you guys really yep. get yourself into our community. And uh, now it's home. Been so fun. It's well, been yeah. so speaking fun. of regionals, you, you competed at regionals multiple times. Yeah, so correct? four times. My gym CrossFit PB, uh, San Diego Athletics. We put seventy plus athletes into the regional in five years. We coached Kenny Leverage at the games one year. Um, Man, it was uh, when CrossFit was in its, in, I say, infancy. Right about when it took off, we opened. I, om I almost opened my first gym in 2007, actually. And then um, there was a girl. We went to grad school instead of opening a gym. And, um, yeah, well, that didn't work out, so I moved out west, like uh, every lost boy does. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> There's yeah. something there. There's something there. No. I got to go to Pacific <laughs> Beach. Um, but, yeah, I opened, a, um, I opened CrossFit PB in 2010, and it was pure performance. I think back in the day of CrossFit, it was so, man, so aggressive, so in your face, and I was trying to be the best. And um, I think that outside of all of the things that I learned, like um, just CrossFit really gave me this platform in which I could – take all of the ideas that I had had about strength and conditioning and apply them to something because it was never a sport of strength and conditioning. Right. And I finally had this framework. Like when I found CrossFit, I had already been squatting and clean and jerking for 10 years from high school training and having really good strength coaches. And then CrossFit showed up and it was like, oh, oh, you want to play back squat? Like I'll, I'll play back Hell squat yeah. with you. Hell yeah. And um, it 
gave me a real reason to not just be a good athlete, but learn everything I possibly could and apply it to myself, our members, and man, just so grateful for the CrossFit community, the what Greg Glassman created. Um, and since then, I have just continued to try to learn as much as possible, and it's led me away from CrossFit although that is still like the basis of the education system and where I got my chops. Um, but as we've all kind of gone through this process of how big and strong and fast can I be? And now how do I maintain all this for the rest of my life and mm -hmm. never have to worry about health? I listened to a podcast that you were on Doug, the other uh, body of knowledge mm -hmm. and talking about how much of a gift it is that we just don't have to worry about being healthy. Like we, we're, we're in shape. We've built this savings account of health that is incredible. And um, we, we just don't have to do that. And I want everyone to know how fulfilling life can be when you have the physical freedoms, when you understand what quality nutrition is, when you know how to train. And if you hit a roadblock in your training, you still have to keep going, but there's just different options. And there's so many ways that you can attack strength and conditioning. Uh, mine was so much for the from the performance side for such a long time and now i teach movement and strength training from a rehabilitative side and there was never a point in my life where i thought that that would be the be something that i was super interested in yeah I'm like why would i want to help people? that's for doctors no right. movements for everybody and the way you express movement people get hung up in in kind of the, the nitty gritty of your expression of movement. And my focus is let's just get into those principles so we can empower people to move better and really create good habits and behavior changes that lead to long-term health. You're the host now, which means you got to put up with all the pressure. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, we're going to have I'm some, gonna th I'm going to throw you some questions I I, that I, we I've didn't talk about before the show. I've lost some hair over the years. I, yes. Mine's already gone, but so I'm in. You're, you're like ahead of curve. <laughs> Six-year gym owner, dude. You're, we're freaking, you're, I'm you're out. Two businesses dude. later. You, you've built capacity yeah. over time. <laughs> um, you can deal with the pressure. Yeah, this, yeah, the hair's gone. We've already thrown that out the window, so let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, man. Yeah. Where, where, where do you want to take the show? What do, what do, what do you want to do? So we're going to kick this thing back a little bit, and we have to go back to the days in Memphis because I think that the story of Barbell Shrugged, and there is no chance you were 27, 29 when you started the show? Uh, no, I would, yeah, what was I? I what am I now? Two years, six years ago. Now, right? I, I was I was uh, 26 when I opened the gym. The show is six years old, so I was 30. 30. Yeah. And you were 20. I was 28. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no chance that you guys, when you threw these threw the microphone on and turned the camera on, that you thought one day I'm going to be the number one podcast in fitness and health. What's going on back in the day in Memphis, Tennessee, at Faction Strength and Conditioning? Dude, we were. Uh, Man, we were doing the grind. Yeah. We were in the gym making it work. We were we had uh we're trying to run a business. Yeah. And we didn't like I didn't start a business on purpose. I opened a gym on purpose. The business was by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and you know, over the years I had to really come to grips with, oh, we have a business. But, you know, we always were looking for I was like super, super blessed because I had Doug in there, I had Chris Moore in there. And uh, and everybody had been doing the strength and conditioning thing for so long. All of us had been training and learning as much as we could. Like for it was three of us that were that had, it was our lifelong passion of health and fitness and strength and conditioning. We were having all these fantastic conversations in the gym, and um, but yeah, we were we were coaching and training and trying to get people to the games and yeah. and like to nationals for weightlifting and, and we were doing our thing it was fun we had strongman going on at the gym we had mm -hmm. powerlifting we were one of the few <laughs> we had way too much in retrospect <laughs> yeah. we, yeah. we, we had all the things we, we had all, all we the were, strength sports we were spread way too thin and and it you know part of it is like we were just passionate about strength sports yeah. you know and uh you know we had all been uh you know steeped in the science of things and trying to bring that out to to the average person and and when we got, uh, you know, we were having really great conversations and we'd go to competitions and have great conversations. And, uh, you know, we had this intern, uh, CTP, Chris Norman, 
and he was interning at the gym. He was finishing his exercise science degree at the University of Memphis, where Doug and I had graduated, and uh, he plugged in, and he said, uh, and I'd been listening to podcasts at that point, he said, hey, have you, uh, you know, have you checked out Rogan yet? I'm like, nah, yeah. nah. He's like, I think you'll find something there. <laughs> so, one, you know, after two months of him badgering me about Rogan, finally listening to Rogan, I go, oh, podcasts can be where the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, there's just no strength and conditioning show. Yeah. So, yeah, like Chris Moore and I started podcasting and things we never published. Like, yeah. we met up once a week, started recording, um, and that, that turned into saying, let's actually do a show. Let's video it, too. Yeah. And, uh, and Doug joined us for, uh, uh, to kick off Barbell Shrugged. And we, we recorded episode one uh, two or three times. And the one you see posted was <laughs> uh, was not like the first try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, there's a little too much alcohol on the very first try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it didn't really go anywhere. Every time, how come every time, like in your 20s, where you like have a good idea, like let's try it, we should get drunk first. Yeah, let's mix <laughs> scotch and and tequila yeah. with this whole situation. It'll no. make it way cooler. Yeah. And uh, people will love us. <laughs> yeah, I think we I think we had alcohol on the show for the first few shows, and then after that, we we're like, you know. What, this isn't working. Let's uh, let's try to keep our brains turned on mm-hmm. for this. And um, yeah, so when we started the show, it was for me. You know, I'm at we have Faction Strength and Conditioning, home of CrossFit Memphis. We had been operating that gym since 2007, so we're five years in. And you know, I was continually looking for a way to like do something new and do something fresh. And when I looked at the podcast scene, I go, look. Nobody's doing a, a, an entertaining strength and conditioning show. In yeah. fact, I didn't see anyone doing strength and conditioning, period. No CrossFit, no strength and conditioning. And I go, all right, like we can be that show. It's super easy. Yeah. And we'd been talking to other CrossFit gyms in the area, in the, in the south, and um, I had done some weightlifting seminars for CrossFit gyms, and I was just talking to these guys, and I was like, wow, they really could use this information. So... Yeah, we we kicked it off, and you know it was a hundred follower. You know, I had like a hundred friends, two hundred friends on Facebook at the time. Yeah, and Doug probably about the same. And we started posting the show, and we just started sharing it. And you know, I think a lot of times, you know, I've been to conferences where, like business conferences, where we're talking about like who has a YouTube following and podcast. Like, what's your what's your magic secret? I'm like, just start posting. <laughs> it's like there's nothing sexy about it. Yeah, and it's just like we just started posting, and it was. For me, it was emotionally challenging to say, look, man, we're going to record ourselves yeah. uh, for an hour, and then we're going to publish it, and like we're claiming that you should listen to us fucking talk for an hour. Yeah. That's kind of like a weird thing to, to do. Yeah. It's not, it's not normal. It, there's a pretty egotistical. There has to be, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, that was, that was uh, you know, what, what our world looked like at that time, and when I when I look back on it, I was like, we were actually pretty narrow minded, and uh, and it was good. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was perfect. It was super locked in. But you also yeah. had, I think, one of the things that's so awesome about the team that you guys have had. I mean, Doug, we train together all the time now. There is never a day where we walk into the gym where I'm not like, Doug's probably going to come up with some half-assed workout. It is like the most thought out, locked in, like. He does think about what he expertise. does. Yeah. <laughs> well, Weird. maybe not even expertise, <laughs> it's but crazy. you're you're like gen. Yeah, I I actually never really know. I just kind of I'm I'm gonna pick something up today. I'm gonna move a little bit. But when we train together, like everything is so dialed in, and the complexity and simplicity, I guess you could call it, of training with you has taken my understanding of movement and just the process that we or you go through, and I just kind of follow along. But um, where did all that come from? What you you have a master's degree in exercise science, right? I do. Yeah, I, I was I was pretty lucky early on to to have a really good mentor. That's that's really where it came from. You know, I was I was always interested in health and fitness, and uh, I thought I wanted to be a Navy SEAL at one point when I was like 13, 14, and I started researching it online because I I had read this uh, a couple of books that made it sound really cool. And uh, really, what I ended up figuring out that I was really attracted to the training that Navy SEALs did, specifically like the boot camp style training when they go through buds and it's just like you know endless push ups and pull ups and dips and swims and runs and yeah. you know. And Mike actually went through a lot of that because he went through went through buds, so he can tell you more about that. But I was I was really interested uh, in quote unquote being a Navy SEAL, 
but really I just thought the exercise was really, really cool. I didn't actually want to like go to war and like, you know, like, you know, do all the, do all the uh, other things that they do after they qualify to be a SEAL through the training. But I was paid to work out. (laughs) Yeah. There was only an industry that that did that. (laughs) And so, uh, but I found a bunch of their workouts online and uh, I had done gymnastics when I was really, really young. And so uh, doing pull-ups and dips and push-ups at high volume, just, it was a really good connect for me at the time before I learned how to squat and deadlift and clean and all that. But um, I started there, and then I was about 14. I met a strength coach, and he and he taught me squats and deadlifts and cleans and snatches. He actually had learned from from Bergner 20 years ago. Yeah. So I actually met Bergner for the first time when I was like 17, 18, 19 at strength and conditioning conferences. So I was just kind of in this world uh, really, really early. You know, he taught me how to program. He taught me how to write the workouts. He taught me all the barbell movements. He taught me kettlebells. I, I had already done gymnastics, and he happened to have gymnastics rings in his gym. It was essentially a CrossFit gym yeah. before CrossFit was a thing. I didn't learn about what CrossFit was for another 10 years or more. Uh, but I had a, a lot of experience uh, in that world. And so, yeah, like with, with writing the workouts and whatnot, now, like I've just, I've just always done that. Yeah. I, I, I remember writing my workouts, my girlfriend's workouts, my friend's workouts, like back in junior high and high school, like when I was, when I was super, super young. Yeah. And uh, I actually really missed the boat on programming and teaching programming and, and whatnot for CrossFit because – I totally took it for granted. This is like a huge mistake that I made was I was like, why is everyone asking me about the work? It's just so obvious how to write workouts. Yeah. Like I didn't think it was special. And I just thought everyone knew and people didn't know. It's like, it's like I didn't even believe them. Like, yeah. I was like, what do you mean? Just, just, you know what to do. Go do it. <laughs> yeah. Like it didn't, yeah. like I remember Mike talking about like, like, it's all about the programming. And I was just like, who doesn't know how to program? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Like I was, I was living in a bubble. Yeah. Having, having only trained with a handful of people in high school with this one coach. And then, and then same thing, like college, graduate school, like in a smaller and smaller exercise physiology, exercise science bubble where everyone knows how to train, everyone knows how to write workouts, friends or personal trainers, like living in the fitness industry, not realizing that, wow, there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to, to do any of this and, and they would, they're happy to go to a seminar where you teach it or, yeah. uh, or what have you. So uh, I've been fortunate to no programming and movement, you know, essentially my whole life. Yeah. Very, very fortunate. We, uh, one thing I love about being in the gym, working with people, um, it, when you meet people along their fitness journey, you rarely at the beginning realize that they're all in this transition phase. And a lot of times you're taking somebody, well, me currently from injury back into the ability to train, or you're going from, you know, someone that needs to lose weight to get healthier. Um, one of the most interesting people I've ever worked with had a stroke in my gym and literally that transition period, I was sitting in a hospital with him that night and he was like, well, what do I do? And I was like, I don't know, dude, but we should start training when you get out of here because that's all I know how to do. And I think it'll help. And now the kid can go play golf. It doesn't really affect his life, but you guys are in a much more professional transition right now, shrug collective. Um, and anytime we're in some sort of transitionary period, we have this ability to kind of reflect on the past and the show's growth and the impact it's had literally on a generation of athletes and coaches. Yeah. What does that do to you? Blows my mind. Right? <laughs> yeah. It, um, you know, I, I think a lot of times I get, I, I've been asked the question, you know, when did you feel like you got big or you made it or something like that? And I don't think I ever got that feeling. Yeah. And, um, and they're looking. People are looking for like a point, like when you hit thirty thousand followers. Was that <laughs> was that the thing, you know, or something like that? And I'm just like, man, it was just. I think we we really focused on what we were doing, and then one day started getting messages like, "Wow, this is really incredible! Wow, this changed my life. This changed my perspective." I think. Um, I mean, there were there were a lot of like micro move, uh, moments. I remember being at the Arnold Classic once, and I'm standing next to uh, Chris Moore. And this guy comes up who had discovered Chris, like us, and then he read Chris Moore's book. And he's like, dude, you changed my life. The guy was 68 years old. Oh, wow. And I'm sitting there going, fuck, dude. <laughs> We're in our early 30s. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, that's a pretty incredible yeah. thing to see happen. Something that we created impacting people who could be our grandparents and parents and um, that, I think that's when, that was probably one of those moments where I was like, man, we are, we're on to something. Yeah. And I think for me, th- what really drove most of it was my curiosity. I, I, I think initially it was like, oh, I think I can help people. And then, 
maybe 20 episodes in, I realized I didn't know shit. Yeah. And then I got really curious. And, and um, one of my, one of my like, core tenets now is I let curiosity be my guide. And if I ever find myself not being curious, I fucked up. Yeah. And it's, I got to get back to that because everything else, everything just gets really bland yeah. if I'm not following the curiosity. And so what's been really great for me personally doing the show is a few things is I got to meet the best. Yeah. The best best coaches i'm the real best stoked on that scientists the mm-hmm. best athletes yeah. the best everybody and for every person you've seen on the show we've met 10 other people that are the best at what they do and we've got to mix it up and we've interviewed people when you get to see an hour of it and we get to we had like two or three days of it you know yeah. like going to see joe DeSena up in vermont it's like we got we produced an hour or two hours of shows but we spent two or three days waking up working out with them in the dark and in the <laughs> snow and like it's just fucking rad and I personally got exposed to people, and, and I, this is something I talk about, is I, how that impacted me was I first was looking for what they were doing. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing that is so special? And then they would show me what they were doing, and it was cool. And then I kept on seeing the same thing. I'm like, all right, it's not what they're doing. It's like, why are you doing it? Yeah. I was like, oh, it's really important why they're doing the thing. Like, like where are they coming from? Like, you know, what's the underlying principle? It's like, why is, why are these guys getting stronger and these guys getting stronger? But it looks on paper like they're doing something different. Oh, but they're abiding by the same principles. And yeah. so I really got to discover the principles of strength and conditioning and nutrition. I'm like, oh, this is getting very principle based. And then I hit another level, you know, a couple years ago where I felt like, I was like, oh, the principle, I, actually, I think I got a good handle on the principles at this point. And then what I started noticing, I was like, all right, what's really setting people apart? It's like, okay, what they're doing is cool and fun. And then the principles, all right, they're abiding by these principles. So what they're doing is working. But why is it that that guy's doing so much better? Yeah. And then I really got into like how they're being. Like, it's not what they're doing. It's like, like how are they, how is a coach being with their athletes? You know, what's, is he, does he care? And is he paying attention? And why is that true? So I really started digging into, like, I, I, I'm not even as interested in what someone's saying anymore as I am, like, how are they being? Yeah. Because when you start meeting, like, really high-level people, a guy like Paul Check as an example. Yeah. I don't care what he says. It's, like, it's how he is. It's, like, how he's being that, like, impresses me the most. And I think that's had a huge impact. I mean, I think any time I get to share space with somebody who is just on another level, I get elevated to some degree. Um, and then... One other point I want to make on this, on, on how the show has impacted me over the years is, I mean, I think it was obvious to me on like show one or two is I walk out of the room and I, I remember having this conversation with my wife too. And I go, I have got to clean my shit up because I, I'm pretty loose <laughs> on a microphone. Yeah. Like I, one of the things that I really pride myself on and the reason I think it it works for what works for me is just being authentic and vulnerable and sharing what's going on for me and what I really think and what I'm really feeling. And if I'm doing shitty stuff on the side, it's going to seep into the show. And so I actually, one of the biggest benefits of doing the show for me was just cleaning up my, uh, just the things I was saying, the things I was doing and just how I was being in life because I understood that more and more people are watching this thing yeah. and uh, I want to be, I want to make the world a better place. I don't want to make it a shittier place. So I want to, I need to be who I want other people to be too. Yeah. Everything. Well, in, uh, I guess you could call it eight years of owning a business now and then having this amazing opportunity to talk into this microphone to everybody. I have learned that so much of what we do is just self development and you see there's no way at 27 years old when I was trying to be the largest meathead in the yeah. gym that I would be able to have a real conversation about strength and conditioning and health and longevity because my ego drove everything that I did. And now I'm so open to maybe I don't know what's right. But this person that I'm talking to happens to be the absolute best at what they do. Um, and... You have to live that life. And if you're not living that life, it's very obvious 
Like if Paul Chak comes out and he's eating a bag of Cheetos and then starts talking about your chakras, you're like, I don't know, dude. Like that's not going to work. Um, so you do have to live that life to be considered, or not even to be considered, but the authenticity shines through. He wasn't eating Cheetos. Yeah, he was not you're, eating you're Cheetos. You're not saying Paul was doing that. You're no. saying if yeah. he if did he something was, like that, yeah. then that would be incongruent, yeah. and that would be weird, and then there'd be a disconnect there. But yeah. the, uh, getting to you, Doug, there's a couple thousand people that have followed your programs in their strength and conditioning journey. Flight, weightlifting, shrug, shrugged strength. How many times did it take you guys to get that one <laughs> down? Shrugged strength challenge, yeah. Shrugged strength challenge. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Muscan Challenge, Bar Bikini, Shredded, Road Regionals. We had a bunch of programs. Unreal. Mm-hmm. What um, what does that feel like when you know that there's thousands of people that have come through your programs and you've impacted them along their journey? Wherever they are now, they can all go back to flight weightlifting. They can go back and find those programs and the gains that they made over that nine months, that year. And you've had a direct impact in on endless people's fitness journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've impacted many people online in those programs. And prior to that, you know, I, I personally trained a bunch of people. I trained a bunch of my friends. We, we ran the gym for many, many years. And then we, we just basically took all the lessons we learned from training people in the you know, physical world in person and then just scaled those things online yeah. to, to affect more people. And uh, it's a phenomenally fun journey. Like like you guys were saying earlier about, you know, people coming and saying, like, you changed my life. Like, yeah, some people listen to the show and they come and say that we changed their life. Uh, but the people that you affect in person, you have a personal one-on-one relationship with yeah. that you can actually be there every day to, like, tweak and perfect and, and – uh, you know, manage and adjust their programming and the people online that you deal with on a daily basis, like those people, you're more likely to have an effect on those people because you're working with them one-on-one. Th- those are the people that, um, you know, they, they inspire me to be a better coach because I want them to have the best results for themselves. And it's, it's phenomenally fun to train people. Uh, it's something I've always loved to do. I've al- always loved like teaching people how to move specifically. Everything else is kind of a side project. Like teaching them nutrition is it's necessary. It's kind of fun, but like yeah. really, I love teaching people how to move. And so, you know, doing online training programs where we teach people how to be better weightlifters and and how to move and how to get really good performance results is is just phenomenally fun for me. Yeah, the um, the Bledsoe Show. As as the do shrugged we, do collective, we, do we want to take a break and then we can get into that? Well, I haven't been. He's the host. I have. Oh t- shit! I'm sorry. To do. Oh fuck! I already when, fucked up. When we get back, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about the future of the shrugged collective and uh, where we're all going and what the vision is of Barbell Shrugged and the Bledsoe Show and all of the young fun talent we're bringing into this this group here. Brad, let's do it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the show. If you'd like to learn more about how to improve your snatch, clean, and jerk, we have a free 55 page ebook you can get at flightweightlifting.com. It has sample programming specifically for weightlifting, uh, weightlifting how to technique videos, and other tips on how to improve all of your lifts. Go to flightweightlifting.com and you can download that ebook for free. Download it now. Um. <gasps> Welcome back to Barbell Shrugged. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Feels pretty awesome. I don't know how it sounds, but you say it better than me. That's for sure. There it is. Yeah. You had more excitement in your voice, we, right? We, you, you've yeah. been beat down over the years. Yeah. We got fresh blood. Upgrade, upgrade. It it's true though. I'm not. I'm not beat down, but like it's it's cool to bring in <laughs> people. You know, six years is a long time, right? And uh, and uh, yeah, changing it up is a really positive way of uh, getting things moving. Yeah, it's that felt pretty good. I'm excited about it. Yes. yes. But yes. as we unravel some of the the past and the transition going forward, the Shrug Collective's taking over. We've got a whole network of up-and-coming podcasters, people that are bringing really high-quality content to their specific fields, and um, the Bledsoe Show being one of them. Mm-hmm. And also, tell us about the Shrug Collective. What, what's, what's your vision of this... Um, this this huge transitionary period for for you, in the show and the network. Yeah, I think that, um, I'm so stoked to be able to highlight other people. I think that uh, it's a really it's a big disservice to to stay small, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of times people will stay small to protect themselves, and I think that. Um, it's actually not an easy thing to do, to go, look, I, I want to step away from this thing wh- that's getting a lot of, of, of the limelight and say, look, let's, let's open it up to a lot of other people. And I think that when I look around and we see what's going on in the world of strength and conditioning, health and fitness in general, there's a lot of brilliant people out there that really deserve 
to be heard. And not yeah. just for them, but I, I think the world deserves to hear what they have to say. And uh, I, I really, um, I, I think with the Shark Collective, what we're, what we're moving towards, what we're doing is we're going to be giving you content every single day. Yeah. And when you're looking for a trusted source, the same reason Doug started Technique Wad way back in the day is, look, you go online and you go, go look at Barbell Snatch yeah. Technique. You're going to find garbage, lots of it. And so the same thing is happening out there, like podcasting and video, like vlogging, all this stuff. There's a lot of content just getting out there. And it's all beautiful. It's all really good. And we want to cultivate uh, a, a situation, yeah. <laughs> cultivate a network where we're highlighting the best of the best. And when you want to get the real information, we want to get the thing that's actually going to help you out, this is where you go. Yeah. And the Shrug Collective will provide that. So if there's any doubt in your mind, like, oh, I don't really know what to do yeah. about nutrition, da 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 Well, we're not going to put him on, on, on the program that is full of shit. It's going to be really high quality stuff across the board. And it's also going to expand the topics. You know, we've been very strength and uh, conditioning oriented over the years coming from weightlifting, CrossFit, um, MMA, powerlifting, strongman, all this stuff. And um, I think that as we get older, we're all evolving and finding that, you know, there's, there's other things that contribute to strength, other things that contribute to health and fitness, aside from what's on your plate and what's happening in the gym. And so I'm really uh, looking forward to be able to explore those topics. Good. Um, as well. The, and, uh, and to put bluntly, even though you kind of already said this, like we have this Shrug Collective. You're not the host of Barbell Shrug. Anders is now the main host for Barbell Shrug. Totally. But, but you, Mike Bledsoe, are still around. You got the Bledsoe show going on. You're helping run the Shrug Collective. You're you're doing many things in, inside the company and with us. You're just not hosting Barbell Shrug, but you are still very much a part of things. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be around more than ever, in fact. So uh, you're actually going to get – I'm going to have more interaction with you because – I'm going to be covering health and fitness topics on the Bledsoe Show. It's going to be going right into this channel. Um, and this actually frees me up in a lot of ways to go find the best of the best. So I'm traveling the world right now, um, hitting different spots, finding, looking under rocks and logs and <laughs> in, in dark alleys for, yeah. you know, the, the best of the, you know, things that we've never heard of. I mean, how many times on Barbell Shrug did we find uh, somebody that's training in a garage somewhere that had really special knowledge? And we are just at You're like the Julian Pinot is like the, like the first guy that comes to mind. Like Julian Pinot, but like you know, a lot of people. If you weren't a hardcore powerlifter, you didn't know Louis Simmons either. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, people were afraid to go there, but we had a way in, and we got in, and we talked to those guys back in like '07 before, you know, everyone knew who they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be looking around. That I, I see that as what I do exceptionally well is go find you know, the things that people aren't talking about yet. So travel around doing that. Um, and, and then just looking at ways that we can elevate the Shrug Collective as a whole, looking and talking to people who want to have their own podcast that, that I think will be a really magical fit. Looking for companies that, you know, they may create really amazing products, but they don't have like a big voice and, or marketing engine just yet. Um, and, uh, and, and also just, yeah, finding those guests for yeah. the different shows. Um, and then for me, my own personal curiosity, like I was saying on the first half, <clears throat> I'm a really curious person. And I think that, that drives my whole life and being able to go solo one-on-one -on -one with people, I'm going to find some really interesting things. And a lot of this is just for me, but I love being able to share it with all of you. Yeah. And uh, so I'm really interested uh, to see what happens. My personal, my personal interest is going to the, the edge, you know, and going, hey, there is this thing over here. You should come check this out. Yeah. And some people, you know, may have a hard time seeing things at first, but as we have all witnessed, you present it, oh, it works, it works, it works. All of a sudden, it's now popular. Anything that used to be at the edge of people's reality or even over the edge of people's reality becomes mainstream in a matter of time. And I, I pride myself on being an innovator, early adopter, going out, finding those things, and then bringing that to the, the bigger conversation. Yeah, that's something, that I guess, a couple of the traits that in the, couple, in the few years we've known each other um, that have really stood out is just – the connections you have, which stems from the way you make people feel when you're in the room. You're always present. And 
that leads to a very high level conversation because you're not faking it when you're here. You're genuinely curious, but that also that curiosity also pulls you in different directions. And your exploration over the last couple of years has taken you through and it's all fitness and health ish related, but you're looking for what's happening at the highest levels of everything. And it's not just in the fitness field. And that's a lot of where for us to just only talk about strength and conditioning with you is not utilizing your skills the best way. We need to find the best people in all of these fields yeah. so that we can bring them into one place. And that's really what the collective represents is nutrition, strength and conditioning, you know, mindset. Where where are all of the, the best people so we can get them on one network and influence as many people as possible? Absolutely. And my what we're really interested in, my interest is, how do we increase people's quality of life? Really, at the end of the day, how do we make your life as fucking cool as yeah. possible? Wake up every day excited, feeling good, mind clear, body strong, injury free, and just being able to do the things that you want to do. That's what I'm interested in. And, you know, we will be posting the Bledsoe Show, which is health and fitness. But, yeah, I found that, you know what, if I really want to improve my quality of life, sometimes it's not another hour in the gym. Sometimes it's learning how to have a better conversation with my my partner yeah. or, you know, exploring some spiritual aspects of my life or, you know, maybe I shouldn't be uh, spending my money this way or like maybe I could maybe I could change my relationship with money in a way that's way more healthy for me and empowers me to be able to do things I want to do instead of feeling like I'm a slave to it. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that I've discovered over the years that wouldn't normally fit into the normal uh, confines of the health conversation, but I think it every single one of those things impact your health and fitness. Now, with the shows I'll be posting, that'll be health and fitness really on that, but I'll be hit exploring all those topics yeah. on the Bledsoe Show. So the Bledsoe Show will be health and fitness on the Barbell Shrug Barbell Collective channel. Collective. Check Shrug that out. Shrug Collective. Shrug Collective. Yep. Uh, but you have other episodes of the Bledsoe Show on your own channel that are not necessarily health and fitness, even though they might be. Yeah, it's it. It depends on how broadly you want to categorize health yeah. and fitness. But I mean, I I see every aspect of my life when I do things consciously. It's in order to to make my life better, and I don't do things, and I don't I don't I'm not really having conversations that I'm sacrificing my health so I can achieve this other thing. It's like how can we really have it all and do it in a way that makes sense for everybody. What is the mm -hmm. most authentic you in every aspect of your life? Yeah. That's where we're going. Barbell Shrug, buddy. You ready to do this? Yeah, yeah. Where are we going? Dude, we're back to traveling the world. I love it, man. Interviewing cool guests, talking about strength conditioning, health, wellness, nutrition, the whole deal. I love it. We, uh, oh, yeah. um, I'm so stoked to get involved into the network of people that you both have built and uh, you as the person that schedules shows, mm -hmm. talks to all of our guests, makes this whole thing happen. Um, what are what are some of the areas I know I, what I'm excited about, but where are we going? What what's what's kind of the the angle that you're not even an angle, but who who are you excited to talk to? What genre of movement and uh, mm -hmm. where where in the strength and conditioning community are you looking to? Yeah, well, well, first off, so that me and you will be the main hosts for Barbell yes. Shrug still. We'll be traveling the world doing our thing. Yeah. Uh, but we still have a couple of other people that will very frequently be on the show. And Dr. Andy Galpin yes. is still going to be around. Love having that guy around. One, yeah. of, one of my best friends in the whole world. Same with Kenny Kane. Uh, he'll be around on occasion. Uh, Travis Mash has expressed a lot of interest in co-hosting with us as well. You know, All three of those guys are like tip-top, very brilliant, brilliant, brilliant human beings. You know, Andy, exercise physiologist. Yeah. Um, you know, muscle physiologist, PhD, uh, professor, just genius level uh, scientist and uh, with a ton of experience in, in the world of strength conditioning and weightlifting, et cetera. Uh, Kenny Kane, brilliant, brilliant coach. Same Travis Mash, one of the best coaches in the country. Put more um, weightlifters into the weightlifting world championships than any other coach yeah. in America. Uh, and he's like 44 and still front squats like 500 <laughs> yeah, pounds. He's a savage. Ridiculous. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a monster, just absolute monster. Yeah. So, you know, we, we got some awesome co-hosts that are going to be still coming on with us uh, as we travel the world. Uh, as far as content, you know, again, more of the same. Like, hey, I I'm going to pop on sometimes. Yeah. You, might, you, might, you might co-host. If we let him. If we let him. Should if we, if we have room. Yeah. I don't know. We have a busy schedule coming up. God damn it. <laughs> email us. I'm not, I'm not completely <laughs> gone. Don't forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, you know, I just want to get back to, the, to our – you know, doing our thing. I, I want to interview super awesome coaches. I want to talk about 
uh, how to get stronger, how to move better, longevity, uh, just general health, man. Like yeah. Back back to just hanging out, talking to really cool people. The the thing that, ah, oh, man, that just not say. everybody gets to see, <laughs> yeah, that not everybody gets to see is we show up like an hour, hour and a half before, and we get to hang out with these people. And if it was possible, which it might be in the future, oh, yeah. to... We can do whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah it really it's is our, our show. show. <laughs> um, but the conversations that we have... You before. can't make it better now. Uh, yeah, I know. This, that's, this oh, is what's going to happen. Better. Better. You're going to make it better. And I'm going to be like, ah, uh, ego is going to come up. We're, like, oh. we're going to keep this it a secret. Go. We're going to keep it a secret. <laughs> Very first Instagram <laughs> comment. Thank God he's gone. <laughs> 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 um, but the, the hour and a half that we show up and we get to train with these people and like really dig into the movement pieces that they're bringing into the world. I mean, mm-hmm. um, just in the last month, the 45 minute tour that we took through Paul Check's house, the ability to go and hang out at Deuce Gym and we're doing all kinds of, um, you know, crawling and cartwheeling and just learning from people that are really exploring like their specialty. Um, and then we get to get on the show. It's really awesome. And, um, man, I'm, I, the thing that excites me the most is how we can take these general principles of strength and conditioning and go find where these principles are being applied, maybe in the MMA world, maybe you know, with the special ops people, there's just so many categories of people that are training for specific things, but using the principles that we're talking about on the show every single week. And it's endless. It is literally endless. I mean, you can get into every sports specificity and man, deadlifting goes a long ways. We can, we can talk about these things forever in every capacity of life. Yeah, you're right about that. I remember I remember being about a dozen shows in the Barbell Shrugged, and then we're going, oh, fuck, man. Are we going to run out of content? Are we going to run out of things to talk about? And then 50 shows later, we're like, nope. Yeah. There, there is so much to learn. There's yeah. so many things out there. That's purely us just not truly understanding how deep that rabbit hole goes. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. and, and the diversity at which how many rabbit holes there really are. Yeah. Like, if the, if the show's done anything for me, it's like I had I was lucky to have that background from a very young age and been in this industry kind of my whole life. But then what the show has really shown me is through the diversity of guests, I've learned so many other fringe oh, aspects man. of strength and conditioning yeah. that, that I didn't get growing up. I got real deep on a few uh, awesome topics growing up, but – uh, through the show, I've learned so many other like little things that that just weren't a part of my upbringing. Yeah, we um, we we have an incredible opportunity to just talk to the smartest people and and find out what motivates them. Getting back to the why, I mean, we sat down to lunch with Breck Contreras about a month ago, and he was talking about all of his PhD friends that everyone knows, everyone reads their papers. They're literally leading every conversation is strength and conditioning. And I was like, you've interviewed all these people, right? And you're like, not one of them. And I was like, man, we have some real work to do. We got to hit the road. We got to go talk to the people. There's tons of people out there that Um, we have yet to get to. Like in the internet and the podcast, the YouTube channels, like it has taken strength and conditioning from these like garage gyms where the really strong people didn't want to talk to anybody. And we've, you guys specifically with Barbell Shrugged and the internet as a whole has just opened up the education and we're just at the tipping point of where is this thing going in all of the all of the areas um yeah it's really exciting I, stuff. i was having um i was having breakfast this morning with john wolf of on it and uh max shank and uh just dude sh- did, shanks shanks the future too didn't, <laughs> didn't even didn't even this is how my life rolls i didn't even plan to see either one of those guys yeah. until like 12 hours ago and i was like oh i guess we're doing this now and those guys are both doing revolutionary things in strength and conditioning and in conversations with those guys i realized i was like oh we're we just got started in the world of strength and conditioning because uh information is just now getting shared and there's so much that's not been shared yet and things being discovered and uh it's it coaches are now young enough there's enough young coaches that have been exposed to mass amounts of information that we're now being able to build on top of that. That just wasn't happening before because there wasn't an exchange of information yeah. before. And it's strange to think that Barbell Shrugged pre this conversation was in a way holding Barbell Shrugged back in that now we have the freedom to go find all the people and we have enough avenues. We have the people, um, we have the channel to get all of those people, their voice and 
get this yeah. information to the people. Well, this is what's excited about Shrug Collective is we have a, a collective of hosts yeah. looking for it. Yeah. So before it was just a few of us. Now we're going to have a team and team of teams to be able to go out and just gather that information and share and disseminate and find what's best. And because there's going to be sharing amongst the shows, there already is sharing amongst the shows happening. Yeah. And we're, we're going to see the things that are actually resonating. You were talking yeah. about Andy and Kenny and man, I wanted to interrupt you so bad, but that's not what hosts do. Good hosts don't do that. Um, but both of those <laughs> I guess guys, I'm a shitty host. <laughs> <laughs> um, but both of those guys, I've only hung out with them in person two or three times, but both of them had such a massive impact on my journey as a coach and where, when I met them, well, not even met them, but when I found their voice through you guys' show, um, like I didn't know that there was people like Andy Galpin. I had no oh, yeah. idea, and I didn't know people studied the things that I was just, like, doing because I thought it worked, and then all of a sudden, he came in and was, like, this, like, definitive voice, not just, like, oh, yeah, we're, like, kind of playing with these back squats and this reps, like, no, 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 how about the smallest muscle fiber? I know everything about it. I know how it reacts to every type of training, and I was just, like, oh, wow, like, this, that's a rabbit hole, like, oh, I need yeah. to get lost in that, and... We have access to that. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And then Kenny Kane, I don't know if there's a better human being that is as selfless and genuinely interested in being a master coach. I think he might be like mm -hmm. the Jesus of fitness. It's or unreal. <laughs> and when I was, you know, I, I we all kind of, a, a transition point in my life was when I was leaving um, the CrossFit world and that methodology and trying to figure out like where I was going to go. And he was developing the po positivity project. And I sent him a Facebook message and I was like, I'm dealing with this in my brain emotionally. I don't really know where to go. Like, what do I do? And out of nowhere, he gives me a call and talks to me for an hour about just the long road of coaching and how your job is not CrossFit. It's about being a master at what you do and really digging into your clients and understanding their goals and their motives. And it was just such an awesome voice to hear at a time from someone I had never met in person and just has like a massive impact on the community as a whole, just because of the way they live their lives. And uh, I can't wait to get those guys on one to have the conversation about how they really influence me. I wouldn't be standing here without their, both of their voices and, you know, to have them on the team, like just wow, oh, yeah. killer, yeah. yeah. And we haven't done a lot of shows with with just the crew lately, where like me, Mike, Andy, and Kenny, just the four of us. And yeah. that, that's something I want to do moving forward is, is a few more shows yeah. with with just me, you, Andy, and Kenny, because sure. those guys have tons to share. Like they're they're great to have on for interviewing other people, but like interviewing those guys, like mm -hmm. especially like man, like every show we, we've ever done you know, with either one of them. But now, right now, I'm thinking about specifically specifically with Andy. Andy smashes. Andy yeah. is an incredible teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Kenny, Kenny, if I, if I differentiate the two of them, Andy's an amazing teacher and Kenny's an amazing coach. And those aren't necessarily always the same thing. Certainly Kenny can teach and Andy can coach in some capacity, but um, Andy is very, very good at, at delivering content and information. Yeah. He's a professor. That's what he does. He speaks to yeah. his, his students in front of the class for hours and hours every single day. He like he knows all the content, the order in which it should be delivered, how to explain it to someone who's a brand new beginner and doesn't really understand it. Yeah, it's great analogies, great PowerPoint slides. Like he's a very, very, very good teacher. So interviewing him on the show is always just really, really easy. You guys ready to do this? Yeah. Still so excited. So where can they find you? Mike Bledsoe. You can go over to thebledsoeshow.com. I'm traveling the world. You can see where I'm going to be at on different dates. I'm doing some events, seminars, all that kind of stuff. Listen to that show. You know, my I was talking to my friend Daniel Schmackenberger the other day, and we were talking about uh, who? Daniel Schmackenberger. You just go, said that. Go listen to that show. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like you know, like what's going to set it apart from a lot of other things? And and uh, uh, my job I see is to challenge the traditional way of doing things so that, you know, it's like, why are we doing these things? Are we doing it just because that's how it's always been done? Is there a better way? So really, you know, tinkering with that. So some taboo sub subjects and whatnot, but I think that uh, I found some rabbit holes where I've made some changes that were not so traditional. Yeah. 
that have enhanced my life tremendously. And so I'm, I'm still looking for more of those nuggets so I can share that with the crowd. So go over to thebledsoshow.com. Doug. Yeah, yeah. We're hanging out. Where All can right. people find you? Uh, you can find me at douglarsonfitness.com. Uh, i got some seminars coming up. Really have been missing um, educating in person, uh, both from a, like a – you know, one-on-one teaching class or personal training perspective and from a uh, hosting seminars and teaching a group of, uh, of people who are interested in a very specific topic. So I've been talking with talking with Andrew, I've been talking with Travis Mash, with Andy Galpin, uh, with Aaron Horsick over at Squat University. I've been talking with a bunch of people about doing seminars, uh, a lot of them in 2018. So uh, if you're interested in that and you want to come to one of those seminars or just see what else I have going on, you can go to DougLarsonFitness.com. Uh, also, if you have questions for me or suggestions for seminars or anything like that, uh, you can reach out to me. Just DM me on Instagram, uh, Douglas E. Larson on Instagram. And in the spirit of today, you can find me here every Wednesday talking to you about strength and conditioning and the most elevated conversation in the game. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate all of the listeners that have been a part of this for the last six years. I understand this is a massive responsibility to continue this conversation and i look forward to the opportunity so thank you guys thank you for just being great friends being open to opportunities and change in this transition and man shrug collective let's do it let's do it yeah yeah awesome looking forward to it but thanks for making it all the way to the end of the show if you like the show which i know you did please go share it on facebook instagram or whatever social media channel you happen to be loving at the moment Pinterest? Twitter? Tumblr. Tumblr. Share it on Tumblr. 